is to open up our evacuated tubes. 20 tubes per box. Before you go out for the install, I always like to rock the tubes back and forth to hear if I can hear any broken glass. They are glass, and with shipping issues, sometimes uh, you know, there's a possibility of a tube to break. First, a word of, word of warning. Never touch a broken tube with your bare hand. Always wear gloves and eye protection with broken tubes. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is just to inspect and make sure that our tubes are there. The tubes are directional. One side has is called the bulb end, and the other side is our open end. So we are now going to install these units into the panel. First step, we have our black dust ring. That's the first step. We're going to get our tube. We're going to dip our tube in the water. I like to give the tube a little wash down. We insert our dust ring. These are extremely tight fit. They actually act like a windshield wiper, so they're actually going to take the water off the tube. I like to slide them down approximately one foot. I give the tube a second dunk. I take the tube and I slide it up, keeping it horizontal to the frame so that I'm not going in on an off angle. Using a back and forth motion, a twisting motion, slide the unit up. Next, I take our cup, I back the cup threads off so that about a half inch of thread are showing. Take the tube. With it, put it over the cup with an upward motion. I clip the top portion of the cup and I slide the tubes back down into the cup. Sometimes you want to hear a click, that's the clicking the cup into the tube. I then back, screw the cup up into it and lower the tube down so that it's making contact with the cup. So, once again, the lower support cups are threaded for height control. I back the cup out about a half inch, take one of the tubes, I dip it in water. This is helping with the lubrication. Take a dust ring, take the dust ring and slide it over top of the tube. It's acting like a windshield washer or a windshield wiper. Taking the water off. Give the tube a second dunk, getting it wet. Keeping the tube as horizontal as possible to the rack, using the twisting motion to slide the tube in. I take the cup, I clip it, push the top part of the clip onto the upper part, and then I push down until I hear a snap. That snapped the cup in, the cup is firmly seated. I run the threads up on the cup so that they're you know, even, and then I back the tube in so that it makes good contact. All the while I'm watching to ensure that I'm keeping nice straight lines. The cup has tabs on the front so that it bites down on the lip of the lower support rail. It is also threaded so you can back it off and thread it back in. You also see that it has a hole in the bottom. That is for the bulb part of the tube, the piece of glass that sticks off to protect it. And some of them are a little bit longer than others. Some of them you may be able to touch through there. So what we're going to do is we're pushing. The unit goes on, clips up in, and then is snapped down. You want to be careful not to slam it into the top of the manifold. Then having the tube in, then what we're going to do is snap it down. We're going to slowly bring it up and twist this in, and then we bring the tube back around. I can touch. The tube is nice and straight. You try to get even spacing in between so that all the lines are perfect. Wet tube, put 
into the unit. I'll put it in the back of the manifold. Push the cup on. And then slowly bring it back down. Ensuring that we have even spacing in between. So we'll do that one more time. Put it in the water. Dry is much more difficult. You don't like to go in when they're dry. It's possible. But even at shows, we use either a bottle of water or something. And simply back our tubes back out so they're seated nicely and ensuring always that they are nice and straight. As you can see inside the tube, we have a stainless steel outside. We have approximately two inches of insulation to prevent heat loss and then we have a stainless or a silicone high temperature gasket feeding the water into a square stainless steel manifold. These gaskets are replaceable. Thanks. The manifold has one inch NPT stainless steel nipples for connections. When you're first installing it, you can see down, you can see the tops of the tubes. See the difference between the tops of the tubes and the top of the manifold. You can see the extra space in there. So they're still making good contact with the silicone, but yet there's still enough room so that we're exposing the tube to the most sunlight. This is the ideal look that you want to see. If we did not lower that lower support rail, they would be up about another inch and that's just less tube that we are going to have exposed. Now that all the tubes are installed, she's going to wet our fingers, touch the glass, and this way we can slide up our dust shields a little bit easier. You can do it dry, but it's a little bit more difficult. Another tip when installing these units, I like to wait until after I have water flow to install the dust shields, just to ensure that if I have, um, you know, a gasket that hasn't made good contact, it'll drip. With the dust shields on, they're going to move the water over, and sometimes it's difficult to tell which tube is leaking. So just a tip.